Do you, it, one of your one of your major accomplishments uh, during your time as speaker was, and I think you talk about this on the campaign trail a lot, is balancing the budget. And how important is balancing the budget in this? You know, there are a couple of schools of thought. One is one is that at a bare minimum the budget has to be balanced. You can't borrow from your kids. There's another school of thought that suggests that if you're in a bad economic time, balancing the budget is secondary to growth. Are those two? Are they do they compete against each other, or are they track with each other? Well, I think, I mean, this is a great debate which has been going on in the Republican Party now for over, I guess, 30 years. Uh, you've had uh, Bob Walker, who's here with us tonight, uh, was, was with me back in the early days as a congressman, uh, and we were among the very small number who were into uh, what was called supply-side economics. I was very delighted last week to have Laffer endorse me. Uh, and Laffer was one of the economists. And the basic idea was, but what you want to do is focus on economic growth. In effect, expand the supply side, where Keynesian economics, liberal economics, focused on the demand side. It said, how do I get people to want more? This said, how do I get people to produce more? Uh, I think there's no question that in the, the two waves of supply side effort in, in the 80s and the 90s, it worked. It worked so well that um, a book was written uh, by Jurgen called The Commanding Heights, arguing that Hayek and Friedman had defeated Keynes because we were now in this world where everybody understood that what you wanted to do was create more supply, have more investors, have more entrepreneurs, have more new companies. Well, it turned out Jurgen was overly optimistic. Because the fact is, um, you look at Obama's program, it is a reversion to Carter, and it is pure Keynesian uh, baloney. If only the government spends enough money, something good will happen. Well, that's exactly the opposite of reality. So I would say, here's the debate in the Republican Party. There's almost nobody in the Republican Party is for an Obama-style program. But the great debate since the late 70s has been between the Reagan wing and the establishment wing. And the establishment wing basically says, look, we can't afford to have tax cuts and to grow the economy because that doesn't work. What we have to do is cause pain and cut spending and we're going, to get to, you know, we're going to get to a balanced budget someday. And then when we get to a balanced budget, your reward will be getting a tax cut. Because they were very, very static model of the rates. The Reagan model was the opposite. The Reagan model was create lots of jobs, create lots of economic growth. And the reward you get will be you'll begin to pay off the debt. Now, we had an absolute test of this when I was speaker because we controlled spending. There's only been two actual cuts in domestic discretionary spending. All of you know the way the liberal budget works in Washington, uh, it is automatically scheduled to do this. And anything that isn't an increase is a cut. And so they, they often will say to you, oh, we cut the budget. Well, no, it actually went up. But it, you know, but, but they, it didn't go up quite as much as it wanted to. So we, there have been two actual real cuts, that is, where it actually went down. Uh, one was 1981, and Bob and I both voted for it, um, under Reagan. And the other was in 1995, and we both voted for it, and Bob Smith voted for it, uh, and, and, uh, and I was speaker. So one is you cut spending. The second thing you do is you reform things. We reformed welfare, and we reformed Medicare. And the result was we saved a huge amount of money, because two out of three people in welfare went to work or went to school. Well, the amount you save over a whole country, when you, know, when you reduce the welfare rolls to one third of what they were, is extraordinary. Plus, the two thirds are now earning a living, paying taxes. So again, you get this double virtue. The other thing we did is we had passed the first tax cut in 16 years. I always tell people, was, yes, we balanced the budget. We cut taxes. We didn't raise taxes. We cut taxes. And we had the largest capital gains tax cut in history. And the result was unemployment dropped to 4.2%. Now imagine if you had 4.2% tonight, how much better we'd all feel, how much stronger the country would be, and how much closer you'd be to a balanced budget. So in that context, Clinton and I were able to negotiate four straight years of a balanced budget. And the only time I think in your lifetime that we've had four straight years of a balanced budget, we paid off $405 billion in debt. 